Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. You find me at an Electrify America station here in the 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Now I'm gonna do a 10 to 80% charge test with this vehicle. I'm currently sitting at 11% state of charge as of me uh, filming this clip, but I'm gonna try to burn one extra percent out of the high voltage battery to do a 10 to 80% charge test to see if we can get near or at the 18 minute advertised charge time here on a 350 kilowatt Electrify America station, as I mentioned. So uh, stay tuned, buckle up here in this video. This is the new 84 kilowatt high voltage battery system here in the Ionic 5N that will be rolling out to other eGMP platform vehicles, such as of course the refresh 2025 regular Ionic 5, as well as I believe the 2026 Ionic 6 vehicles uh, among a host of others as well. So uh, let's see if we can get to the, you know, 18 minute, 10 to 80 percent advertised charge time that of course they already have been advertising on the outgoing 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, but I am very curious to see with that larger capacity, if we're able to maintain the overall speeds, uh, given this vehicle of course has the enhanced cooling. Ambient conditions currently are 82 degrees outside. I actually tried to do the battery preconditioning here on the main system. So if we go and do setup, EV, go into battery preconditioning. So you can see it says normal up there. If we activate battery preconditioning unavailable, battery temperature is already optimized. So according to the vehicle, we are ready to get the peak speeds as long as the hardware sitting behind us, uh, I believe I'll have to check what the hardware manufacturer is, uh, is able to deliver the peak speeds that the vehicle is requesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a camera up on the back glass time lapse or film the entire session and see if we can get 10 to 80% in as little as 18 minutes. So I figured it was a little bit easier just to do a voiceover of the full charge session rather than inputting clips that I actually filmed on site while doing this charge test just so you guys get a better idea of exactly, I guess, how the session went. Now this video is sped up by five times, so I'll go ahead and have that information up on the screen. But I did just wanna say at the start of this video that Hyundai has released more information for the 2025 Ionic 5 standard car with the same or similar 84 kilowatt hour battery pack and how we expect that vehicle to charge in terms of its speeds. And I do wanna bring that up towards the end of this video as it's not identical to the Ionic 5N, but it's actually not too far off either. Now, as you can see, less than one minute into the charging session, we were already at 250 kilowatts of charging speed and the charge speed just slowly ramped up over the session as the pack voltage increased. Uh, so you can see the targeted you know, speed roughly at 10%, 250 kilowatts. And as the voltage rises with the state of charge, the charge speed just slowly creeps up by one kilowatt uh, every you know percent or two within the battery pack. And as you can see, four minutes into the session, we are already cresting the 260 kilowatt speed at roughly 30% state of charge. So this session turned out to actually be a very, very or nearly ideal charge session for the Ionic 5N. Ambient temperatures were good. The cooling system of the vehicle was good. And there was actually nobody else that ever plugged in at this Geneseo, Illinois, Electrify America right off Interstate 80, which I thought was actually very odd because uh, every other time I've been there, there's been at least one separate car. And these are balanced chargers, which means they may power share with a stall on either side of them. So, uh, you know, it was a very perfect scenario, but you can see here we are now approaching the 270 kilowatt charge speed, just eight minutes into the charging session, nearing that 50% mark. Now I do wanna pause the video. I believe it was right at 52% you can see 271 kilowatts. This was the peak charge speed that I was able to achieve on the Ionic 5N and inside the vehicle itself, it was about 266 to 268 kilowatts actually going into the vehicle and the battery itself before eventually, you know, right after ticking onto 52%, it did drop into its first, uh, you know, natural progression uh, to slow down the charge rate down to 215 kilowatts. And you can see that was all done before the 10 minute mark in the charging session. Now it did hold 215 kilowatts, 216 started to creep back up with pack voltage, and then it dropped down at 57%, down to 205. 
So we're well into the battery pack, well into the charge curve, and it's still holding over 200 kilowatts, which is awesome to see. And it really truly is, you know, one of the better charging curve vehicles out there still currently on the market. Now, as we start to approach the uh, 65 mark, I do want to pause the video here. Hopefully you guys can see it on the screen. I'll do my best to uh, kind of showcase it. But right around the uh, 64 percent it dropped down to 170 kilowatts and then shortly after that between 65 and 66 percent it actually did this weird little blip in the charge speed where it went all the way down to 104 kilowatts before bouncing back up to about 123 kilowatts and this was very brief it actually did uh you know it was actually hard to capture because unfortunately my gopro fell off the car but then it maintained the 123 kilowatts for quite some time again stepping up a kilowatt or two as uh, i assume voltage or you know whatever the car is doing to maintain that charge level changes just a little bit and then as we approach the 80 percent mark uh, right around the 78 percent threshold it did slowly uh, or did step down to 104 kilowatt again so it was a little bit weird that it's the exact same number that it did that weird blip at 65 percent again at 78 percent but uh, as we near the 80% threshold, you can see we're at 18 minutes of total charge time, uh, 62 kilowatt hours of uh, energy into the battery pack, and it finally dips below 100 kilowatts of charge speed just before we get to the 80% state of charge threshold according to the charger itself. So it was a little bit of a bummer. We didn't maintain at least 100 or more uh, all the way up to 80%, but it was like 89 kilowatts at the lowest side of things and as you could see from the charge session summary it took exactly 20 minutes to complete the technically 11 to 80 percent dc fast charge session here with this ionic 5n so we just wrapped up that charging session the vehicle shows 80 percent 145 miles of estimated range and boy was that impressive now i'm sure i'm gonna have a clip inserted just after this one uh, you know, telling you a little bit more about it. I apologize for the GoPro that kept falling off. The suction cup did not want to stay uh, latched onto the rear window, but that was very, very impressive stuff. And uh, 20 minutes on the nose, 11 to 80 percent. Man, that is some peak speeds, some peak charging curve, and just some overall peak performance from uh, what Electrify America and, of course, the eGMP platform has to offer. Okay, so now that you guys know a little bit more about the Ionic 5N and how it charges, I want to discuss how the standard regular upcoming 2025 Ionic 5 will charge, specifically with the 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, because that's the exact same size as the one found in the N. So there was an article that came out by Inside EVs that discussed how the uh, 2025 Ionic 5 with the new NAX connector will charge and perform at Tesla's supercharger network, given those stations are limited to around the 500 volt range. So it needs to use a onboard booster to essentially, uh, you know, enable charging at those stations. And as we know, the past or prior current eGMP cars are limited to 99 kilowatts under perfect situations of perfect scenarios. But we've learned that Hyundai has improved its performance either on the battery architecture side or the booster or a combination of both. And it will actually charge up to 135 kilowatts on Tesla's supercharger network, which enables the larger battery pack, the 84 kilowatt hour battery pack to go 10 to 80% in just 30 minutes, which is very, very cool performance. And that's really only 10 minutes longer than the exact test that I just performed with the N. But the cars in general will still charge fastest on applicable CCS hardware and or high voltage level three charge hardware, uh, you know, with or without the NAX connector. So just do keep all of that in mind. But the one item I want to discuss in comparison to the N cars is the maximum peak charge rate on, you know, that, you know, CCS or whatever hardware. Uh, basically, this article says that peak rate is going to be 257 kilowatts of maximum charge speed. And during my Ionic 5N test, I actually saw above or higher than 257 kilowatts from 25% state of charge all the way to 52% state of charge where it did drop down, uh, like I said, to about 215. So 
In theory, there's over 25% of the charge curve or the battery pack that if it cannot go higher than 257, that it will be slower than the N, and hence that might be why Hyundai is quoting a slightly slower charge time for that new vehicle at 10 to 80% of 20 minutes, where on the Ionic 5N, they are still quoting and advertising 10 to 80% in as little as 18 minutes, uh, even though the battery pack itself is roughly seven kilowatt hours larger in overall capacity. So that is kind of what I'm thinking or some of my theories are as of me, you know, editing and filming this video for you guys with some of that new information or maybe 257 kilowatts is just not the correct accurate number and it will do similar or the same speeds as that of the end that it did just showcase in this video where it goes up to 270, 271 kilowatts under an ideal charging session. Uh, but I, you know, it will be interesting to see how the cooling capabilities and all the capacities of the standard car, uh, if they're able to keep up with the N vehicle or not, because that vehicle certainly has a lot of track enhancements and cooling is certainly one of them. So just want to put that uh, information out there. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video have probably already seen some of that information, but it did just come out after I performed this charging test. Um, there was a couple comments that I made in the clips that were not entirely accurate. Uh, assuming that they would be identical to one another, but that is uh, not the case, at least to the uh, according to the information that Hyundai has released. And I don't actually know how the Ionic 5N would charge at Tesla Superchargers Network either with an adapter, if it would be capable of the 135 kilowatt charge speed that the new cars would have, or if it's limited to the old roughly 99 kilowatts that the you know last generation or the previous vehicles are limited to. Not sure if anybody out there has actually tested that, but it would be nice to know that information uh, as well. But overall, insane performance from the Ionic 5N in its charge curve and its peak charge speeds. Significant improvement from the standard Ionic 5 over the last couple of years. And uh, it was finally nice to get a perfect ideal charging session with an eGMP platform vehicle where you're not either power sharing with another vehicle that's plugged in next to you uh, or something just goes wrong with either the vehicle side or the hardware side and, you know, charge speed, you know, ultimately isn't at its peak. So let me know what you guys think of this charge curve down in the comment section below. Like I said, I am absolutely blown away by it to actually stand there for 20 minutes and watch it increase and get, you know, uh, nearly 70 kilowatt hours of energy into the battery pack. It's all just, you know, fantastic to see and uh, really makes road tripping just that much easier. But also, you're not really going to be road, tri road tripping the N given its efficiency and total range, but it's possible. So you can keep that in mind and it still might be faster ultimately than uh, some of these slower cars that can barely do over 100 kilowatts. Uh, even with its barely over 200 mile EPA estimated range. But leave all your comments down in the comment section below. I wanna give a huge thanks to Hyundai for providing the Ionic 5N for me to test and review for a few days to complete this video, as well as a dedicated likes and dislikes, which will be posted very shortly after me posting this video. So make sure you guys keep an eye out and subscribe here on the channel if you guys are not already and uh, hit that like button below if you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful. But as always, I appreciate your support here on the channel and hope to see you guys in the next one.